Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Vicious, and welcome to a brand new tutorial time video. This one is one that I have came up with for you guys. It's going to be called Retro Gaming Icons. And what we're going to be creating is what you see in front of you right now. I have some pixel art from Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, and I've made that pixel art into icons for Windows. To show you that these are icons and not just images, I have a little folder here, and I'll go ahead and apply a icon to this. So we'll go to Customize, and we'll change the icon. Browse to my icons, and we'll just pick one. We'll go with link here. Once I've applied the icon, there we go. Now we have a new icon. Now how to make these, it's pretty easy. I'm going to be using two programs. I'm going to be using Photoshop. Most people probably have it, but if you don't, you can use a free alternative like GIMP. And I'm going to be using Greenfish the Icon Editor Pro, which is a free program. So the first of all, let's go ahead and hit um, Google. To get Greenfish, just go to Google and type in Greenfish Icon Editor. And you can grab it from a CNET or Softpedia. Those are two sites that I trust you can download it from. If you need to get GIMP because you've never heard of it before, then just type in GIMP and go get that from the direct website of GIMP. What we're going to do now, you have an option of getting your sources through various means. The easiest thing to do for old pixel art, especially for popular games, is to go to a website that already has the sprites ripped for you. However, if you have a image on Google that you find, if you have a game emulator, you can take screenshots or get yourself an image by any means necessary, and then you can make your stuff that way. So I'm going to type in, let's see, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past Sprites. And here is a website. And we'll just go and grab, let's say, enemies. And we're going to save this sprite art. And I'm going to save it. Let's see. I have a folder called tutorial for you guys. And we'll save it right there. I actually need to open the image. Here we go. Save image as desktop tutorial. And now I'm going to go ahead and open that up inside of Photoshop. Okay. Now, again, these are very, very basic editing tools I'll be using. So it shouldn't be an issue to use another program other than Photoshop, but I'm most familiar with that. What we're going to do is create a brand new 256 by 256 pixel template. And this is the large sized icons for Windows Vista and 7 and 8. So I'll go ahead, well at least I assume Windows 8, I don't have that yet. I'm going to create that and I have a blank canvas. I'm going to double click on my background layer to make it an actual layer. And I'm going to create a new blank layer. This one's solid white, this is transparent. I'm going to trash my solid white layer, leave me with transparency. If you were working with a screenshot from your game or an image off of Google and you have to manually delete the background, go ahead and zoom in close to your image. I'm just going to grab this one here. This one looks cool. I'm going to select it with the selection tool and I'm going to hit Control C for copy. And I'm going to go back into my template and I'm going to hit Control V to paste it in. And I'm going to zoom way in. This is how you would manually delete the background from pixel art if you need to. I'm going to zoom way in and I'm just going to grab the selection tool and I'm just going to delete the edges right outside of the black. And I'm going to get all the main bits first like this to save me the most amount of time. And once you're satisfied with taking out the largest chunks then you can proceed to go ahead and use the eraser tool. It makes it very easy to do this with pixel art because you have the black outline usually. Now for the eraser tool, the default mode is brush. And if you try to erase something with brush, it just it uh, has a gradient to it. It deletes things in smaller steps of opacity. What you want to make sure you do is change it to pencil. And with that, you can zoom way in. I'm actually zoomed all the way in right now. And when you delete with the pencil, instead of with the brush, you can delete pixels cleanly. So erasing, I'll show you real quick. 
I was to try and delete this with brush, you see how it took out half of it and then the neighboring ones. We're going to do pencil and look how cleanly it'll delete now. There we go. That's completely cut out and, and on transparent background. What I'm going to do is zoom back out now. I'm going to rename this to whatever I want to call it. I'm just going to call this guy wizard for now. And uh, it's control and K Yep, on Windows. This is really important when it comes to pixel art, depending on your preferences. If you go to image interpolation is basically the scaling type. The default is going to be bicubic. And let me show you what will happen if we use the default scaling. I'm going to go to Edit and Free Transform. I'm going to hold Control and Shift to lock my image into the center and lock the scaling so that the it doesn't distort the image. I'm going to scale it up to fit my template. And when I hit OK, you're going to see that it blends it. It comes up with what it feels is the best scaling. This works great for real life images, but you can see that we lost all of our hard edges that make this look like a retro gaming icon. If I was to say this as an icon, it actually doesn't look too bad, but for the sake of perfection, what I would recommend you do is go back to your preferences, Control and K, and change this to nearest neighbor. Now if we go and scale this up again to the size of our template, you'll see that all the edges were preserved and that we have our pixel art. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. And I'm going to show you the easy way to do this if you're making lots of icons. Using one of these sprite sheets, you'll see that the, the people always give you a nice solid background color that is usually very different than the color inside of the icons themselves or the pixel art. What you can do with Photoshop is go to select and go to color range and just click somewhere on that background color and drop your fuzziness to zero. Fuzziness is just another name for range. If you have a high range it starts selecting neighboring and close colors but on a fuzziness of zero we're selecting only this color. Hitting OK it's going to select all of that background and if I hit delete it deletes it all away. So what we're going to do real quick is going to go going to undo that and undo again Select, deselect. We need to change this from a index to RGB. I'm going to double click on my background to make it into a layer. And I'm going to do that select color range again. And now when I delete the background, it will give me transparency. Now I can just grab anything I want out of here. And when I control copy and control paste onto a new blank layer, I'll hide this wizard layer. We don't have to do any of the background removal. It's going to all be done for us. And there we go. Now how to do this into an icon. What we want to do, file, save for web devices. And I would recommend you save it as a PNG 24. So I'm going to save this to our tutorial folder. And I'm just going to call this jellyfish. And we'll go to our folder and see that we have the PNG file. Now to convert this into an icon, that's where our free program comes in. I have two main ways to show you how to do this. One, you can just open up the file. Choose your PNG image and open it. And what you want to do now is file, save as, and save it as an icon. And it's as easy as that. Now inside of our folder, we have the icon. And you can see how it applies itself to the icon. The other thing that this can do that's really, really handy, this program, instead of doing this for every single icon that you create, if you're creating dozens or even more, what you can do is save all of your PNG images. And what I'll show you real quick. We'll go back to this. We'll delete this icon we just created. 
And we're going to go back to Photoshop and save our wizard as well. Now that I have two in here, what I can do is go to File, Batch Convert Files, and I can go and add these in here. Select both of these and hit OK. Go and I'm going to use the Convert to icon and you can choose all the different formats you want. 16 by 16, 32 by 32, 48 by 48. These are the size of the, the icon and this is the color detail. So usually I would go ahead and just check the 32 bit all the way across, but you can add anything you need. Once you hit OK, it'll give you those. And I'm not going to worry about opening these up. And if I don't select a target folder, it should place it back into the same folder we're using. Hit OK and it will batch convert every single one of those for you without you having to open up each one and save it. So now we have all of our icons converted, simple and free. I have tried paid pro programs and other free programs and I found that the Greenfish icon editor always has worked best for me. So that's going to be all you need to know for retro gaming icons. Use these with a retro gaming background and you can create yourself a look-alike desktop that looks like the original video game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and say thanks. And I'll see you guys next time.